What is going on, YouTube? I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below. Please feel free to make fun of my ancient metal coffee thingy. Got it for 50 cents at a thrift store. I don't know how many years ago. All right, so today I'm just going to, I'm probably going to ramble quite a bit. I used to think, I okay, so when I was a little kid and we'd watch the news on TV, we were not called consumers. We were called citizens back then. A good Samaritan or a citizen has done this and this and this and that. Now, everything on the news is about consumers. We're not citizens. We're consumers. They already changed our name. And I always considered myself a citizen and not a consumer. Of course, we have we should have comfortable surroundings and we have to consume food and drink in order to survive. So that's a given. But the older I get, the more I'm like, I'm not, if I'm, if I can't be labeled as a citizen, I know I'm not a consumer. Like I don't, I consume a lot less than most people, but I'm turning into like an anti-consumer. <laughs> like the more I think about it, let, let me put it this way, deception and like mesmerizing people and deception. The deception is insane and, and we fall for it every time. We always fall for it. I like to think of myself as an intelligent person and if somebody is deceiving you like a person that you know, it may take you some time but you eventually figure it out and then you cut ties with that person. You don't want to be friends with somebody who is deceiving you who is stabbing you in the back, who is not doing what is best for your own well-being. You don't want to be around a deceiver, somebody who's deceiving you. And it seems like the products that are available in the world or the United States, whatever you want to say, all of the products that are available are completely deceiving. Companies mislabel their products all the time. Uh, people say that something is healthy and it's totally unhealthy. It's packed full of high fructose people. And then it sticks with people like, like companies used to say cereal is really good for you. Like cereal will give you the energy you need. It's full of packed full of vitamins and minerals. And now you look at the ingredients on cereals and it includes like ground up cardboard, sawdust, Literally, like I'm not making a joke, like a lot of them have like cellulose stuff in it and just sugar, high fructose corn syrup. They're horrible for you. They're so horrible for you. And 50, 100 years ago when cereal first came out, they were saying it's healthy. And that just seemed we're, we've been deceived and it like sticks with us up until 100 years later. And we still think that it's good for us. So we feed it to our kids clothing. Like we're deceived into thinking that we are that we are less valuable if our clothes are not fashionable or we can't walk down a catwalk or a runway or whatever you call it. And so our we don't we're not happy. We're not going to attract the sex that we want to, the opposite sex or the same sex whatever you're into. We're not going to attract uh, the opposite sex because of the way we dress unless you buy our product and then the uh, the opposite sex will be attracted to you. We believe, we, we have believed for the longest time that the bigger house you have, the fancier your house is, the more successful you have been in life. And you're not worth anything unless you're successful so therefore, you must have a big house to show other people that you are successful. It's not about comfort, what's comfortable to you. I was watching this interview interview with Shaquille O'Neal. He can buy any house on the planet that he wants. And he's got a huge house because he's successful. 
And the interview was asking him, you know, how much of your house do you use? And Shaq said, two rooms. He's got a family in a giant mansion and he uses two rooms. I, I just think that that's insane. We are constantly rebuying things that we've already bought because for some reason we don't like the color of something like I'll just just use an example a couch right so you buy a couch and it's fine there's nothing wrong with it but all of a sudden you paint your walls a new color and you decide that the couch no longer goes with the walls so instead of buying a couch cover no you can't just buy a couch cover you have to buy a new couch, a whole new couch, like a $1,500, $2,000 couch. And I can understand buying a new couch if like your couch is uncomfortable or the springs are broken or what, ha you know, you your family's grown and you need a bigger couch, whatever. But just, you know, buying, consuming stuff just because somebody else told you that you need it. It's total deception. In this day and age, it seems like all of the companies are deceiving everyone. If people knew how many, like, okay, so companies, some companies are now forced to advertise how many calories are in a meal, right? But they don't advertise how many calories you're supposed to eat in a day. So if a, if a meal at McDonald's is 2000 calories, but you're only supposed to eat 1500 calories in a day to maintain your weight. It doesn't say that on the advertising because they're trying to be deceptive. Because the more calories you get for the least amount of money is the best deal. So that's what you're trying to get. It has nothing to do. And they don't ever say like, hey, this is really bad for you. You're going to be hungry in an hour and a half after you eat this. They don't say that because of all the MSG they put in it. You know, getting your nails done and your hair dyed is not, if you don't have the personality, <laughs> then it doesn't matter at all. Any guy will tell you that personality, looks are important, but personality is more important. And I just think that we live in, no good can come from consumption. No good. You know, we're living in this... I, I just get reports nonstop and all I see is people are like, I can't afford anything. And the reason they can't afford anything is because they were deceived into thinking that they needed a college education, that they needed a big house that they can't afford, that they needed a brand new $50,000 car because that's the average uh, car cost nowadays. So now... They've got $2,000 a month in credit card bills, car loans, and, and student loans. They've got two, they're paying two grand a month on that. The, that doesn't even include their rent or their mortgage. And people are only making 20 bucks an hour. That's why the numbers don't add up is because they were deceived into consuming things that are not necessary in order to become successful. I have a college degree. It's sitting in my drawer, in my guest my guest room closet, in a dresser in my guest room closet. It is sitting there. It has done me no good. But I was deceived into believing that getting a college education would put me on the fast track of my career path to make more money. It was a lie. <laughs> a complete and utter lie. When I was 18 years old, my beater car, I took it to a car shop and they said it was going to cost $3,000 to repair. I could have taken it to a different car shop and they would have fixed it for $700. But nobody ever tells you. I thought that car repair places charge the same amount. So I thought if I took it somewhere else, they were going to charge me $3,000 no matter where I went. Deception. Deception. They deceive you into thinking that. People often buy new, like they'll they'll get a car and run it for a long time and it'll need a repair, like a $2,000 repair. And back in the day, that was a lot. 
that was, it's like $2,000. Wow. If I can get a new car or a new used car for $6,000, you know, it might be time to think about getting a new car. Now I still see people who get a $2,000 car repair and they're like, I'm going to go buy a new $50,000 car instead of repairing my car for $2,000. It's a depreciating asset, but they don't tell you that. They think the the car advertisements show groovy, like off-road, rugged, all-terrain trucks, and you're using it to commute to your office job set five days a week, maybe seven days a week so you can pay for the thing. You're not even using the features on the truck. You just wanted a big, fancy truck so you could look cool. How's that $1,000 a month payment working for you? Nothing good ever seems to come from consuming. So you buy this big fancy truck and now you can't afford your groceries. So you put your groceries on a credit card with a 28% interest rate and you're still paying off the same groceries five years later. (laughs) You're still paying off those groceries because the interest is so much that you put a thousand bucks on your credit card and it's you still owe eight hundred dollars five years later because people don't understand money there's a reason that money is not taught in schools there is a reason because we live in a capitalist society a consumer driven society schools don't want to teach you not to consume or how not to consume they want you to keep earning money so you can keep paying off money that you already owe to giant corporations who spend billions of dollars researching how to get you to spend more money. And then I have people on here. <laughs> it's it's funny that people assume that people who live on a low income or spend very little money They just have an assumption that those people are unhappy or sad or gosh darn it, they have nothing to do all day long. They're just sitting at home in the cold, in the dark, doing nothing. No, that's not the way it works. I probably have more fun in any given day than most people have in a week. Most of those people who are in debt working nine to five, because I don't have the stress. I don't have the stress that they have of having to go to a job that I hate in order to pay off my bills that I never needed in the first place. I learned 20, 20, 20, I learned 20 years ago how this all works. And I am so much more peaceful now than I was back then. I can tell you that. Then we live in a society where people say no good deed goes unpunished, right? That's the saying, no good deed goes unpunished. So uh, people don't do good deeds anymore. (laughs) And it's true. Every time I do something good for somebody, it bites me in the butt, Y'all remember my roommate in Arizona? I gave him free rent, cooked every day, free food, and he tore up, he, he, he thrashed the room that he was staying in. It was filthy and disgusting in there after he bragged so much about how clean he was. And he would never eat at home. He always ate out. No matter what I was cooking, I could be cooking brisket steak, I could cook his favorite meal, mashed potatoes and gravy with uh, fried chicken. Didn't matter. He was going to go get it at a restaurant. Something's wrong with those people. I got to tell you, it makes no sense to me. So he was spending $15 a day and he only brought home a thousand a month. And we had this plan that he was going to buy some property and and, uh, get a cheap used trailer and park the trailer on the property. Get a, and then, you know, save up for a septic system, all this. It was going to take a year and a half. It would have taken a year of him living me at my house to save up for the land. And then um, he would move to the land with whatever. And then six months later, he'd have everything else. But uh, within, 
I want to say six months, five or six months, he was gone from my house. Because as soon as he found out that I figured out his deception of how cool and clean and how willing he was to save all of his money and I was totally deceived, I go in there and the room's thrashed and he hasn't saved a penny. He left two days later. Like, hey, man, you haven't been doing anything that you said you were going to do. So guess what? I will never do a good deed like that for anyone else ever again. He ruined it. No one's ever going to stay in my guest room except a friend who's visiting. No one's ever going to. I'm never renting out a room in my house again because of that. Same thing with my rental property. I rented out all utilities included. Everything's great. Um, They illegally subleased it to somebody else who essentially stopped paying rent and squatted there and was had a U-Haul ready getting ready to steal all of my stuff. To steal everything in there, all of my furniture. So, utilities are no longer included. I'm there to make money and that is it. It is completely a business. I'm not here to help out anybody. It's illegally subletted. Um, I'm going to get you on videotape and you are going to be evicted, put out on the street, not my problem. Because one, because you tried to help somebody, you tried to do the good thing, you tried to be a good landlord and somebody screwed you over. So there's no good deeds going on in the world anymore. You know, I tried contacting two different food banks because my orange trees, I am all orange out folks. I'm telling you, these trees produce for three or four months out of the year. My freezer is full of uh, concentrated orange juice, fresh squeezed. My refrigerator has orange juice in it. I've got decorative oranges on my kitchen table. I've got oranges filling full in my fruit tray in my refrigerator. And my trees are bombarded with hundreds and hundreds of oranges. So I contact two food banks. Hey, uh, do you want my oranges? And they said, yes, we'd love them. And I said, great, when can I drop them off? No response. So why would I go out of my way? Now I have to fight in order to do something nice. I called them. I emailed them. No response. So the next step would me be would be me going into the food bank begging to be able to give them my food. This is not the way the world should be working, folks. It's not the way the world should be working. There has to come a point when people stop thinking with emotion and start thinking with thoughts. You know what I mean? Don't think with your heart. Well, I want this because I want to be pretty. But I want this so I can look cool for all the girls. And all my guy buddies will want to talk about this cool little motorcycle thing that I got that I can't afford. If you can afford it, great. If you can't afford it, not so great. But, you know, you're going to be the life of the party for maybe two days. How is that $50,000 worth for two days? When you can't afford it. That's right. No good deed goes unpunished. So I don't, I don't really bother doing good deeds anymore. I just donate my money and call it a day. And not to the food bank because obviously um, people don't want to be helped. People don't want to make things better. So I give them to animals. <clears throat> I like animals better than people. I'm sure a lot of you can agree with me. After after you've been backstabbed a hundred times and deceived a million times, it's like, okay, I think I'm done with people. I'll just stick with uh, stick with these little guys over here and down there on the floor that you can't see. He's really cute. But yeah, I mean, we, we live in a crazy world where we are, there's just so much deception going on. We're deceived into believing that we need a college education. We're deceived into believing we need a big house. We're deceived into believing we need the coolest, best, awesome car so that we are the cool guy on the block. We are deceived into thinking that we need to um, wear fancy, expensive designer clothes. We're, we're deceived into thinking that name brand items are more healthy than off-brand items. We are deceived into believing that eating fruits and vegetables is more expensive than prepackaged food. It's not. Trust me, it's not. 
no matter how you look at it. And people are like, I want pizza. I want French fries. Go buy a potato. Okay, that makes French fries. It's way cheaper. You know, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. Just about every single aspect of our lives, we are deceived into thinking that we need to spend all of our hard-earned money in order to put our lives in order. In order to have uh, a life that is meaningful, we have to spend everything, every corner. I swear I get in my car and all I see are ads everywhere and I'm just like, God, just, ah! Do you guys ever get frustrated like I do? (laughs) I get so frustrated. Maybe it's because most of my job is about saving money. Sometimes I'll come on here with a ramble and I don't have anything to reference it, but I'm just like, why is everybody still spending? People, okay, so I went to the grocery store this morning. I ran out of half and half. I'm going to the grocery store. I pass by the church and it's a food bank. The food bank is open. There is a line of cars outside of the parking lot onto the street. They're blocking me being able to get into the grocery store. And, you know, you just, you see all of these cars and some of them are banged up, but most of them are better than mine. Like, you know, a giant SUVs, Eddie Bauer, whatever. And I'm like, why is your car better than mine? And I can afford to buy groceries, but you can't. Because your car is worth $45,000 more than mine. That's probably why sell your car and get a cheap car and then you have $45,000 for groceries. I get so frustrated. Okay, I'm done. (laughs) They're saying that there might be a recession coming in 2024. They said the same thing in 2023 and 2022 and 2021 and 2020 and 2019 and 2018, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. You know, even when times are good and like the stock market's up, job earnings are great, they're producing more jobs, they're like, it's the bubble's going to pop. We're going to have a great recession or a silent depression going on here any second now. (laughs) And it, you know, it does, I don't know. To me, it's just like business as usual. I'm going to keep putting money into my uh, retirement account, whether times are good or times are bad, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares? Just keep investing. You you know, I do get some really concerning, (laughs) I guess that's the, the right word, concerning comments from people in their 60s and 70s who have never invested a day in their life. And they ask me, what should I invest in? Like, what stock should I invest in? And and it's kind of, that's that's kind of sad that they don't understand, like, st- you don't have to invest in just one stock. Like, you're going to be super lucky if you get the next Apple or Tesla or Amazon or whatever it is. You're going to be super lucky. Those are very few and far between. But there are index funds like the S that follow the S&P 500, they follow the S&P 5, 1000, the NASDAQ. Those are indexes, by the way. Um, and they follow those and those are the most safe over time. But if you're in your 70s, you know, you're already pr- past the retirement age and you don't, I don't think you should be investing, honestly, I don't think you should be investing in your 70s. You should be putting them into high interest accounts because you don't have the time left if something goes bad and you lose 30% of your investments. You know, no high interest earning accounts are not going to keep up with the rate of inflation, but it will protect your money. So I don't know what to tell people in their 70s who have never invested. I I would say, see, go talk to a financial advisor and see what they say, because I don't know all of your details. And I don't want to know. I really don't. I don't want to know. I don't want people sending me their personal stories about why they never were able to invest and um, lifelong stories of what do I do. I'm sorry, I'm here on a YouTube channel to help y'all save money, but I'm not going to I can't legally give you financial advice on a one-on-one basis. I'm not certified in anything. I'm certified in the school of hard knocks. I've got no paper to back up 
anything that I say. (laughs) I'm not a CPA. I'm not a financial advisor or a financial planner. I'm not a life coach. Um, That's all up to you, folks. That's all up to you. So I'm going through some of the... What is going on? I'm going through some of the articles online here, and it's just all about, like, recession and people being poor and the next the silent depression and you know kids not uh thinking college is worth it anymore which i agree money traps that frugal people fall for and that's pretty much just like buying everything on sale and you got to be careful with some of these articles cuz these articles a lot of them are um sponsored so they're sponsored articles and then they're like how not to waste money. And then they send you these links to like apps and stuff like that where they're making money. And I don't think that that's, I don't think that's a good thing. Oh, gambling. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, I don't gamble really. I guess I could, but I mean, it's, it's not my thing. All right, folks. That's what I've got for you today. Don't, you know, try, they used to say that fluoride is what made people dumb down. I'm not so sure. I really do think it's the education system. But uh, try opening your eyes, not just looking between the lines, but look at what is behind the front that you are seeing in front of you. Like a lot of, not just companies, but people, they create a front. You have to look, use your BS meter and you have to look behind what they really want. Like, what do you really want? And if what a company or a person really, really wants is not in your best interest, walk away. All right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Don't forget, I have a Patreon page that I post on pretty much daily. Um, and, uh, I also have my book for sale and I really do appreciate the support when people purchase a book and it's got really good reviews on Amazon. Um, nothing, nothing super bad except for one where they said that I was like a crazy, uh, witch who does voodoo or something like that, but (laughs) I don't, um, wouldn't even know where to start with that. But, um, Yeah, go ahead and buy a book if you want all of the money-saving tips that I give in a very condensed written form, something you can stick in your back pocket, or you can give it away as a stocking stuffer or a simple gift. Uh, Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.